Mheshimiwa Raila Odinga Waziri Mkuu wetu wa zamani Waheshimiwa manaibu wa rais wa zamani Mheshimiwa Kalonzo Msioka na Mheshimiwa Msali Mdavadi um, Your Excellencies High Commissioners and Ambassadors Maspika wetu wa bunge la senate na bunge la kitaifa viongozi wote ladies and gentlemen good afternoon uh, uh, first i want to say that uh, i hope mheshimiwa uh, raila you are not referring to me as a bourgeois <laughs> but I want to agree with you. <laughs> I want to agree with you that we have a mischievous media sometimes, not all the times. On a day as important as, as this, when you have a headline saying Raila Odinga says he's going to run in 2022, they are trying to reduce this occasion to a matter of 2022. But we have all agreed that it is not. But on the same media, the same headline, they have said that William Ruto is coming to meet demons at Bomas. <laughs> now, I am asking myself, whether there are any demons in Bomas. <laughs> or better still, maybe I can ask them, Oliskia Wapi, <laughs> that there are demons in Bomas. But having said that, um, Your Excellency, this is a very important moment in our history. Important because you have persuaded us that the making of a constitution is always work in progress. And that we must strive progressively to have a negotiated constitution, constitutional settlement, or to arrive at a place where we are all working together, building consensus. And I share fully with those sentiments. I know even as we are having this meeting and this launch of this report of the Building Bridges Initiative, Your Excellency, you have persuaded us that this is a moment to look at our Constitution and to find progressive amendments to our Constitution. There are those who believe, yes, it's a constitutional moment, but to progressively implement the 2010 Constitution, civil society and others think so. There are those who believe that maybe this is a moment to discuss the ravages of COVID and the reality of our economic status, especially the majority 40% old people of our country who live below the poverty line, and the 16 million or so young people who are unemployed. All this, Your Excellency, as you have said, and as the former Prime Minister has said here, this is a process where we can bring all our views together and listen to one another. And no idea is more superior or less superior to the other. <clears throat> Let me say we have a civic duty, all of us as Kenyans, to engage in this process. We do not have the luxury to say, I don't care. We do not have the luxury to walk away. In any case, it is said 
that the punishment given to good people who don't participate in the politics and governance of their country, the punishment given to them is to be ruled by fools. I don't think any one of us here wants to be ruled by fools. That's why we must participate in this process. And it's our civic duty to do so. The BBI process has given us a raft of proposals for us to see, to interrogate, to improve. You did tell us, Your Excellency, that we are all free to improve on this process. And the many proposals that have been put, especially that were outlined here by Adam Solo on administrative issues, on legislative issues, I believe that since we have a forum where in parliament and in government where we can discuss the policy, the administrative and the, and the legal issues in parliament, that can be interrogated in that process. Many of those issues that are administrative and that are legislative are issues mainly to do with our youth, mainly to do with how to do business, how to grow our economy. And Your Excellency, I want to say that uh, these are very important issues. And in any case, I would add that from that list, especially on matters to do with young people, how we can assist them with higher education loans board and give them a moratorium, how they can start business, it must not be lost on us that the real problem, the bottom, the real problem is that these young people are jobless. That is the real cause of all this. And that is the discussion we must have. That is the discussion we must have. <laughs> Having said that, Your Excellency, there are, in my opinion, gaps. The single most important sector that drives our economy, contributing 25% directly to our GDP and through manufacturing another 24%, and which employs almost 65% of all people in Kenya, is the agricultural sector. I dare say, Your Excellency, that this is an area that Again, we must find a mechanism of having a conversation, especially the farming community, and matters to do with productivity, matters to do with proposals that were made on guaranteed minimum returns for our farmers, our wheat farmers, our sugarcane farmers, our coffee farmers, our tea farmers, our dairy sector, the pastoralist corner. Your Excellency, it is my humble submission that that is an area that we can improve this document on. Um, I have heard many speakers say they have finished reading and we should uh, uh, move on. We, we are not all at the same level when it comes to reading. <laughs> Scientists like myself, we take a bit long because we interrogate things and we want experiments and we do many things. So I would plead with the, the first learners like Alonzo Musioka to bear with us <laughs> just a bit so that we can all move together. And I, and I agree with Kalonzo Musioka that we, will, we should try and have a non-contested referendum if we will end up there. 
But Your Excellency, let me just say two or three things before I conclude. On the matter of the judiciary, allow me to say there is huge space for us to have an improvement on the proposal that has been made. Access to justice is one of the biggest challenges that we had, and that is why the 2010 Constitution was promulgated. As we talk today, the judiciary, as per the requirements of the law, there should be a high court in every county. As we talk today, there are counties, almost five counties, that do not have a high court, and many Kenyans have to travel far to look for justice. As we talk today, though the law provides that there must be a court at least in every sub-county, there are 160 counties that do not have a court at all. And the problem is that the budget for the judiciary, we need to operationalize the judiciary fund that is already in the Constitution. So that the judiciary can establish more courts and the judiciary can hire more judges and more staff so that Kenyans can have access to justice. The recommendation that has been made to have an ombudsman appointed by the executive into the judiciary, in my respectful submission, is a derogation from the independence of the judiciary. And we must be careful. We must be careful about the independence of institutions. We are coming from a history where judges received telephone calls where courts were held at night, we do not want to go there. On the matter of IEBC, let me say, on the matter of IEBC, the recommendations that I have read say that political parties participate in the appointment of commissioners to IEBC. My brother Raila Odinga is good at football. So let me try to ask, how fair will be a league where the referee is appointed by teams? And not all the teams, some teams. How, how fair will this league be? If, that, if, if you persuade me that you will, ha you will end up with a fair game, fine. That's what I'm saying. So if you tell me it is okay for some players, for some teams, not all the teams participating, to appoint the referee, if that's what we are saying, I have my reservations. And I need to be persuaded, like many other Kenyans, that that is fair. On the third issue, you have had me, I have had you. And I think that is, a, that is good progress. It's good progress. You've had me, and I have had you. You think it's fair? I have a different opinion. Maybe we will find a meeting ground somewhere. The, the third issue, the fourth issue, the third issue, Your Excellency, is the independence of our police force. The 2010 Constitution was very clear that the police must act independently of any politicians, whether they are in government or in the opposition. To recommend that we will have a police council chaired by a CS 
is actually a derogation from the independence of the police. And I want to ask you, we must be careful on where we are going. Today, you may have the latitude to do what you think will be right as per you. Tomorrow, the shoe will be on the other, on the other leg. <laughs> on matters to do with devolution, I agree that the increase to 35% is progressive and that we must devolve more resources to counties. But accompanying the increase of resources to 35%, we must also ensure that the Senate has the necessary constitutional power to ensure that, that res those resources are available and they are used properly. To recommend that the Senate cannot continue to have the constitutional mandate to discuss the division of revenue is actually a downgrade of the Senate. In my respectful submission, with additional resources, and with members of, some members of parliament now being members of the executive because of the appointment of some members of parliament as members of the executive. In fact, the recommendation should not be a downgrade of the Senate, it should be an upgrade of the Senate to the upper house. And in any case, so that I conclude, in any case, we are now saying women and the participation of women in our governance doesn't make us weaker, it makes us stronger. It doesn't make us lesser, it makes us greater. If we are saying in the proposal that women now go to the Senate and you are, you are saying that when women go to the Senate, they are going to a Senate which has been downgraded, which has no responsibility on matters of resource allocation. Are you enhancing the participation of women or are you downgrading the participation of women? I mean, we are having a frank and honest conversation, good people. And it's good for us to listen to one another. So if we are saying women who today are sitting in the National Assembly where resources are being discussed, if we take them from the forum where resources are being discussed and take them to a downgraded Senate, we are making the participation of women nominal. The participation of women should be substantive in my respectful submission. And finally, Your Excellency, I know um, my brother Bishop Oginde has said there are hustlers here and they should stop the hustling and they are the reggae people and they should stop the reggae. I don't know about the reggae, maybe I can talk about the hustlers. <laughs> but let me say the following. The real elephant in this whole conversation is what was identified as the winner take all and the inclusivity question. Now, Professor Adam Solo, I have confessed I'm a scientist and I'm a bit slow. I want you to explain to me in this proposal you have said that in this proposal, we will have the president with his running mate, deputy president. They will win, uh, or we have candidates, they will win an election. And then the president will appoint the prime minister and the two deputies from the winning coalition. 
and then we will have the runner-up being the leader of opposition. Now, no problem, it doesn't matter who it is. I have no problem. You know, let us not personalize, there is no problem. <laughs> now, the question, the question I am asking myself, have we sorted out the winner to call question? Yes. Oh, is that so? Yes. So, the president from his side, like for example here, President Uhuru Kenyatta, I am here, Kimunya is the prime minister, uh, because he's the leader of majority. We have Jimmy Angwenyi, who is our deputy, as a, a, a deputy prime minister, and maybe Maoka Maore as one of the deputies. So, what happens to the whole NASA brigade together with Musalia and all these other people? I mean, and, and I am not saying, I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying, I want to be persuaded, and forgive me if I am slow. Forgive me, there are so many Kenyans who are, who are, who are in my category. Are we together? Finally, on this inclusivity question, it is my humble submission that as we discuss inclusivity around us, the leaders, we must have a candid, open discussion on inclusivity about the millions of Kenyans locked out by poverty and employment. We must discuss how they are going to be part of the Kenyan society. That discussion we must have. And I want to thank uh, the young man, very good, and the bright, intelligent young man from Kitale, because he said that we should not bring 16th century uh, technology. And I am sure he was referring to the wheelbarrow. And I possibly he was referring to me and this wheelbarrow. Sindio? Good. Now, the question I want to ask us, how come in the 21st century a 16th century tool called the wheelbarrow, millions of citizens in the 21st century are still dependent on the wheelbarrow and mokokoteni. That is the discussion we need to have. Yes. That is the discussion we need to have. And that discussion is a discussion that involves millions of Kenyans. Millions of Kenyans. Let me then say, as I conclude, that uh, the Honorable Kalonso Musioka, I am finishing. You know, I speak for millions of hustlers. So just give me a minute. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, Bishop Oginde said that the hustlers must stop the hustling. I have heard leaders here say that as, as we discuss this conversation, we must not have an us versus them. I have also, say, I have also heard leaders here say we must never have a conversation and a contest about the poor and the rich. We must never go there. And I believe we must never go there. But I want to remind you, good people, 
Abraham Lincoln, the 17th President of the United States of America, said, things may come to those who wait, but only things left by those who hustle. That is Abraham Lincoln. He was never talking about the rich and the poor. He was talking about the people who wake up early, the people who sleep late, the people who work hard, and that is the society we need to build. It is now my humble pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to ask His Excellency the President of Kenya to make his remarks and thank you very much for listening to me. Asante Nisan.